Hey guys, what's up? Hope you're having a good day today, and today we're talking about my favorite lens in my whole camera bag, whole camera closet, everything, and that is the Sigma 24 to 70 millimeter 2.8 f-stop lens. It's an amazing lens. I've had a great experience with it, and today I'm going to talk about why it's been my favorite lens, and I'm going to share my honest review of this lens with you guys. If you guys wind up liking today's content, don't forget to subscribe below. This is a new channel, just launched at the beginning of this month. So it's a baby channel, trying to grow from the ground up, and I appreciate all your guys' support. And first of all, the best, most important thing about this lens that I love to highlight to people is that it's versatile. What I mean by that is that it's a 24 to 70 millimeter range, and it's a constant 2.8 aperture. So first, addressing the 24 to 70 millimeters. In most scenarios that you're gonna be in, in videography, photography, I'd say more specifically maybe videography, you find that 24 to 70 millimeters is really where you're gonna hang out most of the time. Of course, there are situations where you're gonna need something maybe greater telephoto length or a, a, a wider zoom length. But beyond those situations, most 90% of the situations I'm in videography wise, 95% of the time I'd even say, I'm in that 24 to 70 millimeter range. So 24 to 70 millimeters is a very solid, consistent, safe, um, zoom range to land yourself within. So if you're looking for one lens to be a one and done lens, this is definitely the focal range that you wanna be sitting at. And so that's one of the biggest reasons why I recommend this lens. Now, beyond that, what's even more important to me is not only to have a good focal length, but having a good aperture, a good minimum aperture, and a 2.8 constant aperture. So I'll highlight a little bit of why that's so good for, for people who are looking in video and photography professionally. And that's because first of all, it's 2.8 on the low end. Now 2.8 isn't maybe as low as it can get. It's not an extreme low f-stop or wide open f-stop, but it is really good. Like it's, it's good enough for most scenarios that you're gonna be in. Most of the time, as long as you have a decent camera, I find that 2.8 handles noise plenty well enough and gives enough shallow of a depth of field to where I don't feel like I need you know, too much, too much less than that, or too much more shallow of a depth of field. This camera shot right now is being shot on the Sigma 24 to 70, and it's at a 27 millimeter focal length, which is pretty wide. And so you don't expect a lot of shallow depth of field in it, but yet you can see the background behind me is blurred enough to where it still makes me stand out. And so at 2.8, you can see even at wider focal lengths, you're still getting a good amount of depth of field or enough for a lot of scenarios that I would argue that you're gonna be in. Now, what I mean beyond just 2.8 as being a great f-stop number, is that it's constant and constant is important because it doesn't change and go up as you kind of zoom in or zoom out. It's constant 2.8 throughout the whole focal length. So that does kind of two things. First of all, what that does for you is it gives you a reliable number that you know you can stop down to every time, no matter regardless of your focal length. Now beyond that, what I really like about a constant 2.8 aperture is that you can zoom in, zoom out, and it'll keep focus on your subject. Rather than something that's variable, sometimes when you zoom in, it'll kind of focus into the background or focus somewhere else if you're in manual focus. Uh, situations like that, this will keep your focus locked in where it's supposed to be. So for me, that's really important because if I'm zooming in really quick into a subject, maybe during a wedding that I'm shooting or during a film that I'm shooting, I wanna be able to know that my focus is gonna stay where I have it landed and not gonna be adjusting as I'm doing that zoom. So the second thing I really love about this lens is that it has a very buttery smooth zoom and focus ring. And for me, that's really important because first of all, with focus, I'm a manual focus shooter. I usually 99% of the time I'm using manual focus. So I need something that I can very fine tune, not feel like, like it's putting, you know, a ton of resistance against me or kind of hiccuping as I'm kind of turning that zoom focal distance that I'm locking into. And so in, in this lens, I'm able to really pull focus manually very, very precisely. And that's huge and super crucial important to me as a videographer. And I think for most people, as they're getting more and more serious about their videography and learning that maybe you can't rely on autofocus in all scenarios and having a nice buttery smooth zoom um, ring as well is also really nice because in some scenarios, you will need to be zooming in and out. And it's just annoying when you have a, a lens that's just hiccuping, like it just, just bothered me. So all I have to say, this lens has a great build quality to it. It feels solid, it feels very sturdy. Yes, it's a heavy lens, we'll get to that in a moment, but it really feels like you're getting a quality lens as you purchase this lens and as you use it, it doesn't feel like it's cheap plastic or anything like that. A nice metal build for the most part and a really solid piece of glass. Now third of all, what's really important to me too is that it's super sharp around the whole lens. Like the image quality of this lens is phenomenal. <laughs> I think Sigma just in general does a great job in their lenses of creating really sharp, really tack sharp lenses. 
that retain image quality and really retain this quality piece of work in their glass. In a lot of lenses I've used, for example, like let's take a really bad lens as an example, is maybe like the Canon 50 millimeter 1.8. It has horrible image quality in the corners. Like it looks, it can make you puke. It's so bad. Like it just looks like it's all blurred, all streaking. But in this lens, I find very little streaking, very little blur in those corners when I don't want it to be. Of course, there's gonna be shots where you have that out of focus and stuff, but when you wanna keep a sharp, you know, steady look throughout the whole image, it really keeps up that that quality. And I think it really sells this lens as being an overall really good lens. Sigma tends to build their lenses a little bit bigger, a little bit fatter, a little bit heavier in order to retain image quality in those corners. And I really like the, that about Sigma as a brand is that they're not afraid to sacrifice weight or maybe a little bit of extra cost on their end to be able to get their customers good, really good image quality in their lenses. Now next, what I really love about this lens is the bokeh. The bokeh is gorgeous, beautiful, and it really doesn't let me down. I, I, it doesn't feel like I'm shooting like squares in the background when you have a light in the background, maybe that you know looks like <laughs> a square or a hexagon or things like that, but it really feels very, very natural, very blurred and very circular for the most part. Very soft, very creamy, really nice look to it. And I think that the bokeh in this lens is one of those, those fine things that just helps sell a lens that much more. Like a lot of times you can run into lenses that maybe have a great amount of specs on them, but then they have just those fine tuned details are really poor in them. But I found that with the Sigma 24 to 70, the fine tuned details like bokeh in this lens are really great and really high quality. Now, let's talk a little bit about the cons of this lens. So really, in my opinion, there's really only two cons to this lens. One to me is practically negligible, <laughs> but to some people it's important and that's the weight. Sigma lenses, like I mentioned before, always seem to have a heavier weight for the most part. So this lens doesn't defy that rule across Sigma lenses. This lens definitely does hold up to that standard. It's a little bit heavier for a 24 to 70. There's other 24 to 70s who are very similar in weight otherwise as well. So I'm not saying it's extremely heavier, but it definitely is a little bit heavier. It's a full frame lens. So that kind of gives you context for where it's supposed to be. And ultimately, if weight's a big factor for you, then maybe this wouldn't be the lens for you. Maybe this is something you have to be thinking about. But to me, carrying around a little bit of extra weight, weight, weight. But to me, carrying around a little bit of extra weight is definitely worth getting that much better of shots. So for me, weight's not a huge factor. But I would say maybe the bigger con about this lens that you know I've come into over time is I do have a pretty good camera body for noise control. Like I can feel comfortable shooting video up to 3,200 ISO, photography even up to 6,400 ISO, and I feel comfortable. But if you don't have maybe great noise control in your camera body, you might have to consider that with, with this lens as well. 2.8, like I said, is a great aperture for most scenarios that you're in, but there will be scenarios in which if you, if you don't have great noise control, you will need to get lower than that if you're shooting certain types of things in very low light scenarios. So for example, if you're doing a lot of indoor shooting, you may need something that's a little bit closer to like a 2.0 or a 1.8, 1.5, something like that. And so I think just being aware of that, being aware of your needs and what you need as a photographer or videographer and just your camera body and where you're coming from, uh, will will help you succeed in terms of picking the right lens for you. But if that is a low enough f-stop for you, I really can't find an argument against this lens, honestly. Like it is better than every other lens I've ever used out there for the price point. I mean, this lens comes in at a little bit over a thousand dollars and for every other, you know, Canon 2.8, uh, 24 to 70, you're paying 1,700 or Panasonic's, you know, native one, $2,000, stuff like that. This one is just as good in my opinion in terms of image quality. And so for me, there's really no downside to getting this lens as opposed to those many others. It's usually like half the price of on brand 24 to 70 Trinity lenses that are 2.8. This is a great lens. I can't recommend it enough. If you guys are interested in looking at this lens, make sure to check out my affiliate link in the description below. It helps me out a lot without costing you guys an extra penny. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe below if you like this content, want to see more content like it, want to be inspired, want to learn about videography, anything like that. And I can't wait to see you guys in the next video.